of the hundreds, if not thousands, of pieces of communication traffic that you experience each and every day, you're likely to remember only the tiniest proportion. I ran an event last November, and I challenged 80 business leaders to raise their hand if at some point during the year they'd experienced or endured a PowerPoint presentation. This was November, so as you can imagine, all the hands were raised. I then asked them to keep their hands up if, and only if, they could remember a single one of those presentations. Only five hands remained. Only five! Now, the saddest thing about this is it's typical of modern communication. This noise that surrounds us and bombards our senses. Because there is a massive difference between being heard and getting through. Being a simple drop lost in the communication ocean and that one striking message that hits you right at your core. So I'm going to help you today to make sure that your communication is not only remembered, but also gets through. If we're serious about getting through in today's communication chaos, we need to be courageous. We need to walk off the map where there may be dragons, but there's also massive value. Now, I'm sure you've all experienced the power of getting through. It happened to me recently, and it changed my life. If you're anything like me, or you're like how I was, you'll be very aware of these multitude of messages that come pouring in, this recommendation, the advice, the information that flows in when you're about to start a project at home or at work. This flood of communication traffic that, if you're not careful, leads to delay. It leads to hesitation and procrastination. Maybe I should do some more preparation. Maybe I uh, need to gather some more resources, maybe do some more research. Or you received a simple observation like I did that said, Nick, you don't need to be a perfectionist. You need to just get on with it. An observation that not only got through, but set me free. I used to be a perfectionist. I used to strive for perfection. No more. Now I simply strive for outstanding. Because in reality, outstanding will do. So I thought I would test my theory of walking off the map and getting through. And I thought I would test this theory in the most hostile communication environment known to man. <laughs> it's London's tube service. No one communicates on the tube. What better place to walk off the map? So I'm on the tube, and I'm on my way back from a conference. And at the conference, I've picked up a squidgy stress ball. And I'm sitting on the tube, and I thought, wouldn't it be a nice idea to play a game of catch? So I suggested this to my fellow passengers. Why don't we have a game of catch? Now, you can imagine their response. Actually, their lack of response, because suddenly they were disappearing into themselves. They were, they were shaking their heads and avoiding eye contact. So I thought I'd reassure them. I said, at some point soon, we're going to go through Oxford Circus. When we get to Oxford Circus, more people are going to get on the train, there's going to be more players, and it's going to be more fun. The game can begin. Oxford Circus came and went, and more people got on the train. I did notice, however, that nobody got off. Nobody took that opportunity to move carriages. So in my mind, the game could begin. <laughs> so I may be a little bit crazy, but I'm not daft. So my first throw, I threw the ball to a young lad, a young German lad, as it turned out. He caught it and threw it back. 
I then threw it to another passenger. They caught it and threw it back. And then something tiny but magical happened. I threw it to another passenger and they threw it to someone else. <laughs> the game was no longer about crazy old me. It included everybody. And then the game really did pick up pace. The ball was flying around from one side of the carriage to the other. It worked its way to the middle part of the carriage where the doors are and people are standing. It worked its way back. Catch, throw, catch, throw to the middle part of the carriage where there's another set of seats. And it worked its way back. And then it went to the center of the carriage where the doors are, to the middle part of the carriage, to the third section of the carriage, actually out of sight. And for some reason, it didn't come back. And the young German lads look in. They said, I don't think it's coming back. And I said, it doesn't matter. Have a look around. And all the passengers were smiling and laughing and talking. In fact, acting incredibly human. We had broken down those communication barriers. We had walked off the map and we had got through. On the tube. So I'd like to try a similar experiment with you today. It also involves <laughs> a game of catch. So the way the game's going to work is when we begin, I'm going to ask you to stand. And then I'm going to throw numerous squidgy stress balls into the audience. Your job is, first of all, to catch one and then pass it on. When you've caught one and you've passed it on to someone else in the audience, you can sit down. Your job in this game is complete. Well done. You've caught it, you've passed it on, and you've sat down. And as the game progresses, there'll be less and less targets, I mean, less and less people <laughs> to aim the ball at. And the game will come to an eventual conclusion when everybody's taken a catch and sat down. Are you up for this? <laughs> I'm sure you are. Let's see how quickly we can fill this room with catches. So everybody on your feet. Okay, here they come. Heads up. You might want to help me out here. Whoops, whoops. Yeah, you want to grab some? Yeah, you catch. So catch it, pass it on. Plenty required at the back there. That's it, catch it, pass it on. Okay. Keep passing them on. Here they come. It's getting there. It's a bit chaotic. Uh oh. Keep going. Keep going. We're getting close. We're getting there. Almost there. Just a few more. Any more? Last one. Everyone? Yes. Give yourself a massive round of applause. <laughs> yeah, I'm th I should have seen this coming, shouldn't I? <laughs> so that was and is the frenzy of communication chaos that surrounds us. The traffic is everywhere. It's flying around, it's whizzing past us at all sorts of speeds. It's over our heads, it's by our feet. If we're not careful, it's bouncing off us. Traffic is everywhere. This, this is the difference. Taking that catch, sitting down. This is what getting through looks like. This is the difference of getting through. Now the perception in most parts of the world is that being heard is enough. That's why we're drowning in emails. We're bombarded by Facebook updates and Twitter feeds. And we sit through numerous presentations where experts, they, they share their brains, they share their knowledge. Unfortunately, in bullet form only. 
There's a word of warning, actually, to those individuals and organizations that, that like to share their brains and their brains alone. There's only one audience I know that likes brains, hungers for brains and only brains. It's an audience of zombies. Trust me, you do not want an audience of zombies. To avoid the zombies, you need to do more than just share your brains. The reality is that getting through is what really counts. Communi communicating in a way that creates momentum. It enables change to occur and it promotes action. If we're serious about getting through, then we need to shift out of our current orbits and we need to dare to step off the map. Now, it may be something massive, like Nelson Mandela's address at Live 8 in Johannesburg, where he asked his audience to be great, to become the great generation, to allow greatness to blossom. Or it might be something initially very small, like Lily Robinson's letter to Sainsbury's. Lily Robinson, aged three and a half, who wrote to Sainsbury's and asked the question, why is tiger bread called tiger bread, when actually the pattern on the bread looks more like a giraffe? And Chris King, aged 27 and a third, his incredibly empathetic response that spoke to Lily on her terms in her language and enabled that simple exchange to go viral and give Sainsbury's global PR and changed the name of tiger bread to giraffe bread. So what is it that makes this difference? What is it that enables us to get through? Now, I truly believe the place we need to start is with our audience. Let's consider the human element every time we communicate. The more we understand our audience, the more likely we are to communicate in a way that gets through. What moves them? What motivates them? What entertains them? What stirs their emotions and changes their perceptions? The more we know this stuff, the more powerful our communication, the more likely we are to get through. A superb way to transform your audience to the heart of your message is through the power of stories. They're so easy to absorb and understand. I implore you, share your great stories and move your audience powerfully again and again. So what is it that makes you stop and take that catch? What is it that changes the way you act and makes you think differently? Before you communicate and share your wisdom with the world, ask yourself, where's the value for my audience? And consider, what is it about you and your communication that adds massive value? If we truly want to get through in today's communication chaos, we're going to have to be courageous. We're going to have to walk off that map and face those dragons of tired corporate thinking. We're going to have to do something amazing. We're going to have to connect and empathize with our fellow humans. In the words of Maya Angelou, who summed it up beautifully when she said, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. To truly get through, our communication needs to change the way people feel. So next time you have a chance, an opportunity to communicate, don't rely on a box of balls to randomly spread amongst your audience. Imagine you've got just the one opportunity to get caught, to stop your audience in their tracks and have the impact that both you and they deserve. This is the massive difference between being heard 
and getting through. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>